Um, good afternoon. Welcome to Atheist Island Kerry. Welcome to our first um, open meeting. It's our second table today. I recognise a few faces from the Facebook page. Is that right? Yourself yes. at the back we, we've met? Excellent. Um, obviously Michael Nugent's here today. Jen, Jen O'Donnelly couldn't make it down sadly. Um, and Ashling's here from Dublin as well. Uh, Michael's going to be talking on education and other matters. I'll be having a brief chat about the crucifix up in Kerry County Council, just bringing people up to date on where that is and where it sort of ended until we take more action on that. Ashling, will you be speaking or anything? So that, that's that. Um, and then we'll go into a sort of Q&A and uh, there's enough of us here, we can get together and have a chat and find out more about what we're about. But thank you for coming, you're very welcome. Last Monday a motion was passed by Kerry County Council calling on the government not to change the Eighth Amendment, which obviously relates to abortion in Ireland. Now again, it's, it's largely symbolic. I was there the day that they passed a motion calling on the government to bring in marriage equality, and that was a great day. It's symbolic, has no power, but it is, it is a very, on that day, the council was full and there was an audience. Now, as Peter will, will say later on, the crucifix was brought in on, it, I was finagled in. On Monday, there were 16 uh, councillors present out of a chamber of 33. Uh, Councillor Cullity of Fianna Fáil uh, proposed this motion. He spoke in favour of it. One person spoke against it. And in the end, a council of 33 passed a motion with just 10 votes. 10 for, 5 abstains, 1 against. It's, it does seem like playing games with politics especially in such an important issue, and especially in light of recent polling that shows that the vast majority of people in this country do want limited abortion in Ireland. They may not be pro-choice in all circumstances, but you have three quarters of people responding that in, in cases of incest, in cases of fatal fetal abnormality, they do want to have abortion available. And yet, we now have the council has said that it shouldn't happen. So, just very briefly on the crucifix in the county council, it's, it's a good example of a sort of disdain, I would use the term, that um, minorities and atheists in particular are held in by some members of our local council. And the motion that was passed in the county council, that was, went in with the proposition, was this, and it was put forward by Councillor Cullity. It was put forward not to a group of 33 councillors, it was put forward to a group, I believe, of 9 or 10. Wait until they got them. Basically the minimum number to form a quorum. The motion that was passed was, in light of our Christian faith and the strong Christian values contained within our constitution, that Kerry County Council erect a crucifix on the wall of the new council chamber. The Kerry County Council, I, mean, I don't need to explain this too much, is there to represent every single member of this community be they English, Polish, wherever, be they Protestant, Catholic, atheist, it doesn't matter. They're here to perform a duty to all of us. Um, and to, to set themselves up in this fashion, I, I was absolutely reprehensible. It caused a stir at the time. We wrote to them to complain and ask for it to be removed, to point out that it was against human rights law and whatever else. They wrote back and said they were allowed it under something called the Lautzi case, which was taken, it's an Italian court case, which was taken to the European court over a crucifix in the classroom. Um, we responded, and I'll keep it brief, the paperwork's all here, anyone can look at it, to point out how it was actually a very different case, how it didn't apply, and actually how by using the Lautzi case example, they'd actually given away their own case. Um, and they've written back and said basically, well, that's great, if the councillors want to change it, they will it's up to them and I spoke to two councillors one who's no longer a councillor and another one who was there about this um, they were present during the vote and they said if only they had to cop on at the time they could have which just walked out of the room it wouldn't have been a quorum and it would never have passed well my feelings on this really are it, it's still hanging up there they're all in the chamber they can all see it they may not agree with it they may think it's a terrible thing but they've done nothing about it and it's a simple vote to get that taken down and maybe to recognise that the Kerry community is wider than just a Christian one. Um, so that's ongoing. That, it came to a bit of a halt and it's ongoing and I, I, I think when we've got more members it'd be nice to, to revisit this, especially with the election coming up. 
Uh, I don't think there's any, anything more to be said on that. Just really to emphasise again, it it's an open sort of uh, club here in Atheist Island, Kerry. You can come along and say you don't have to get heavily involved, but we, we, we'd love to see you. We really would on our secular meetings. Um, we're a small group and we can build on that. And I think there's a lot of work we can do. Probably the most fundamental and, and, and in, you know, in the long term the most important is religious discrimination in the education system. The Catholic Church runs 90% of our schools, as I mentioned earlier, um, and it is allowed to discriminate in a range of areas against atheist uh, parents, children and uh, teachers. And Atheist Ireland has a policy which we call the Schools Equality Pact. Now PACT, P-A-C-T, is an acronym for Patronage, Access, Curriculum and Teaching. They're the four areas that we think have to be tackled together in order to bring about an education system that respects everybody's rights equally. <coughs> the, uh, the, the first of those areas in terms of patronage, we need to change the uh, both constitutional support and underpinning um, and the laws that allow school patrons to have an ethos which in 90 percent of the school primary schools is the catholic church an ethos that is not only uh, that they're allowed to teach through religious instruction classes but they're allowed to permeate throughout the entire school day um, that needs to change the second one is is access uh, the, the situation where, where children need to have baptism certs as a test to get into oversubscribed schools needs to change and that requires changes in the Equal Status Act which is, is the act that, that allows schools to dis religious schools to discriminate in, in access. Uh, the third area is curriculum and that's an interesting area because uh, you have a right to opt out of formal religious instruction classes. That right is in our constitution. Um, but even if you do opt your child out of the former religious instruction classes, because they permeate the religious ethos throughout the whole school day, you can't effectively opt your child out of the entire curriculum. Uh, and, and you don't know where in the curriculum that religious beliefs are going to be integrated into other uh, classes. Well, it, well, it's not really so much classes because in primary school they don't have discrete classes, they, they just, just hold the entire curriculum together. So the NCCA, which is, a, which is the government's curriculum uh, and assessment board, is currently trying to put together a proposal for a state curriculum in education about religion and beliefs and ethics, um, which should be delivered in an objective and critical and pluralistic way. This is part of, particularly the ethics, it's part of something that Atheist Ireland has been raising for years um, with, with various bodies, including the, the Forum on Patronage and Pluralism and also with meetings with the Taoiseach and the Minister for Education, is that in our constitution, uh, education in our constitution is primarily the responsibility of parents. And that includes religious education, physical education, intellectual education and so on. Now, there, are, there is another clause in the Constitution that says that the state has a responsibility um, in view of conditions of the, on the ground to ensure that every child has a minimum level of education in certain areas, one of which is moral education, but which doesn't include religious education. So the state isn't responsible, uh, or, or certainly isn't obliged, to provide religious education, but it is obliged to ensure that every child gets a moral education. Now, because moral education is currently delivered through religious classes in most schools it means that if you opt your child out of the uh, the formal religious instruction classes then the state is failing in that in, in their duty to that child to provide that child with a moral education and that was an issue that we we have raised consistently and is, is now coming to the fore with this decision by the government through the ncca to propose a curriculum that will be uh, that, that will teach about ethics outside of religion religious class now we are currently we, we just had a meeting yesterday with the um, the ncca about this our concern about that course is however well they put together the curriculum that if the curriculum is delivered in catholic schools um, in accordance with the Catholic ethos that it won't be delivered in an objective and critical and pluralistic way and therefore it will under, fatally undermine the whole purpose of having a, a neutral, uh, religiously and atheistically neutral 
um, ethical uh, curriculum and teaching about religion and religions and beliefs. Because bear in mind in primary school, it's the same teacher, you know, throughout the whole day. So if, if you, so even if they did bring in that course and you had a teacher saying, at you know, five to twelve, saying. You know, this is the state curriculum uh, about religion and beliefs. This is what Catholics believe. This is what Protestants believe. This is what what atheists believe. This is what Muslims believe. Um, and then five minutes later, when they're into uh, the religious instruction class, the same teacher is saying to the same children, uh, Catholicism is true. So, so there's a range of areas where we're very concerned about the delivery of the curriculum. That that that. Uh, First of all, you have to have the right to opt out of formal religious instruction classes. Secondly, there has to be a right to a neutral studying environment throughout the rest of the day, those parts of, of the, um, uh, the curriculum that are the state curriculum that, 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 that outside of the, the formal religious instruction classes that you can opt out of. Um, and the final part uh, of the Atheist Ireland Schools Equality Pact which is, is patronage, access, curriculum and teaching, is the discrimination against uh, teachers. Uh, the, the, so Catholic schools are allowed, and when I say Catholic schools, bear in mind all the time when I say Catholic schools, I mean state-funded Catholic schools, where the state pays for the maintenance of the school, where the state pays for the salaries of the teachers. The uh, Catholic churches are allowed to, to, to employ the teachers, based on their own ethos and criteria, are allowed to not employ a teacher if, if they feel that, that, that they might uh, be incompatible with promoting and protecting the ethos of the school, which is the Catholic Church ethos. Um, and essentially what that means is that for most teachers, if, if, you, if you try to, to get a job as, as a teacher in, in Ireland, if, if you qualify as a teacher, uh, in 90% of the state-funded schools you are denied access to employment uh, in your chosen profession uh, that you have qualified for unless you essentially, uh, as, as with you know, president and, and judges, un, un, unless you, you um, mislead people about your non-religious beliefs. So there are a whole range of areas there in terms of, of patronage access, curriculum teaching, all of which have to be tackled simultaneously. There's no point in just, as, as the government are now trying to, to, to uh, pretend to be addressing of saying, well, we'll address the, the, uh, the access and you won't have to have a, a, uh, a baptism cert to get into your local school. And that's obviously good. Obviously, you shouldn't have to have a baptism cert to get into your local school. But just addressing that on its own, all that does is gives you access to a school that is then going to discriminate against you. So you need, yeah, and, and be, be taught by teachers who are discriminated against. So you need to address all four areas simultaneously. And, and when uh, you have politicians call at your doors, um, or if, if you're lobbying politicians here, uh, coming up to the, the election, do highlight that. Do highlight the, the, the whole area of, of education. Just on inclusion, most of the schools will tell you, you know, we include the child. They'll, they'll say, they'll insist, we are, we are inclusive. Um, and especially on the second level I have this conversation, I was going to give a quick example of what inclusion means. I was at another school, not the one I was talking about just now, and um, I was talking to the teachers and the staff there, and we had the whole show around for the second level, and they insisted throughout the entire time that we're very inclusive. Your child will be included. We take on board what's going on, and, you know, we really tailor ourselves to a very wide and diverse community where school caters for it. And on the wall of the main hall of the school is a huge cross it goes floor to ceiling it's a very high ceiling and all over this cross were little post-it notes and there were the names of people that died that were important to the children so I said I think this is a great opportunity to ask you know to find out what did you do for the children of atheist parents or who identified as atheist or minority religious parents when you were doing this for these children what did you do to include the other children in this. She said, oh, well, she said, I'm telling you, we're absolutely inclusive. They all did it. They all put their <laughs> post-it notes on the cross. That's inclusion, Kerry style in, that, in the <laughs> education service. Everyone's included. Everyone does what the Christians are doing. Um, and you know, so you've really got to be very careful. The language is very important. You really have to do dignity. That's one, I think, good example of how we can, we can walk away thinking, yes, we, I've heard what I want to hear, but in actual act, practice, actuality, things are very different. And they don't, just don't always get it. It has to be explained. 
as regional officer I granted the brunches particularly outside of Dublin. In Dublin we have the brunches we usually have sometimes 20 odd people will turn up different faces all the time it's a much different community uh, people are m much more comfortable to say that they're non-religious or secular or atheist. Um, I found I'm a, a Dublin woman, I've always lived in Dublin, so it was a bit of a culture shock for me, just how reluctant people are to say that they're, they're non-religious or, heavens forbid, use the word atheist. I think, you know, it's really important that we start to, to find other atheists. Um, I've spoken to quite a lot of people who'd say that they'd feel quite isolated. Um, some people would feel that their community distanced themselves from them because the community is the church and it is the people in the community all have this in common and they don't um, so I think yeah this type of gathering th these type of groups even if it's just three four five people to start with just coming together getting to know each other you're not going to agree on everything that's fine it would be terrible if we did agree on everything all the time I'd, I'd like to see atheism coming off of Facebook and coming out into the real world and people actually just starting to engage face to face and, and building that village that we need. We need that atheist face to face village where we're actually engaging with each other in, in the real world and then when there's a few of you together then you can go and you can bring your issues to the table. You take yourself off the menu and you get yourself a seat at the table. It's very difficult to do it on your own. You know, you need that little network of people just around you. So I think the, the, the issue of the cru crucifix across in the, um, in the council chamber would be a really good issue to focus on. It's a local issue. You know, it's something that you can deal directly with the councillors. You start arranging and you me start meeting with the individual councillors. You explain the position and you get them to take a, a stand on it one way or the other. Either they're going to support you or they're not. And you know exactly where you are with them. If you're talking to anyone and they're asking you about education and opting out of religion class or getting your kid into a school, direct them to teach, don't preach. Everything is there. All the resources that they need are, are all up there. There's sample letters for writing to the schools. Um, you have a right to opt your child out. You'll find everything you need there. Um, it's one of the things we say a lot at the information table. We direct people to teach, don't preach. Have a look there. If you can't find what you're looking for, then drop us an email and uh, we'll, we'll sort you out from there. It would be great to see the information table. Um, the brunch is fantastic for getting people together, getting them to know each other, getting them to chat with each other. The information table for Atheist Ireland is that's our our place in the public square. Um, not to hide away, not to be shy. We redesigned the banner, big words, the word atheist is in bright red and you can see it from right down the street. We get buses on O'Connell Street going down O'Connell Street with tur full of tourists taking photographs of the Atheist Ireland table at the GPO. Um, it's, it, you know, you, we're, we're, you can't be shy about this, you can't be embarrassed, you've got to say no, this is, and claim that word atheist and use it and try and move away from describing yourself as non-religious. You know, use the word atheist and, and let them know that you're there because, you, like I said, you've got to bring this to the table. We're, we're, we're not doing ourselves any favours by being too shy and too quiet about this. So, and I know it's hard in a small community, but that's where a few people coming together can just, you know, you're not isolated, you're not on your own then. Just to say a couple of things actually, what we might do here in Kerry, now I think everyone, I hope everyone's aware, we have a monthly meetup um, currently in the galleys on the second Sunday of every month at 12 o'clock, and you're all obviously very welcome to that. Uh, where I'd like to take it from there, really, I, we've had the table in the square today which it was a cold wet day, it went okay. We've had one before. People are interested, they do come over and chat and we get to explain ourselves and talk about the important issues. And I'd like to sort of try and push that a bit harder in the future. I'd like to take one down to Killarney and one out to Cast Live and it wouldn't have to be on a regular basis, but um, we do need more people involved locally to do that. We really only got it done today because Michael and Ashton came down myself and may have been the local crowd, as it were. Um, so, that's something I'd like to look forward to, but you can come to the secular meetup on that second Sunday and have absolutely no involvement with the table at all, have no involvement with any of the work of Atheist Island, just come along, meet up and chat, that's equally okay.